Hello and welcome back to Create Garden Rooms. As I'm sure you've guessed from the title of this video, it's a slightly different format to what we usually do. We're at home in my garden room and we've got this massive selection of tools behind us. Now, the purpose of this video is to go through all the tools we use to build the garden rooms in order for you to make an informed decision on which you think is gonna be the best tool for you to buy to build your garden room. Now, the reason behind all this is there's no point buying 7,000 pounds worth of tools if you're only gonna use them once. We thought it'd be great if we could go through each one, describe the pros and cons, you know, which is our favorite, which is our most important tool, which saves us the most time, and then maybe you guys can write it down and select which tools you're gonna to use. And that may work on a number of factors. It may be you've got the budget because you're saving on the money, building the garden yourself, so you might have that extra 600 pounds to buy the Milwaukee nail gun, which is gonna save you loads of time. Or you think, no, I'm just gonna use the impact driver, gonna screw the whole thing, not gonna use a nail gun, gonna take my time, I don't need to save time because that's how I'm building the project. So, that's the basis of the video. We're gonna to get to it. Towards the end of the video, we're gonna have some of our favorite tools we're gonna to go through and tell you about and which tools we highly recommend to use for the garden room build. So stay tuned with us throughout this video. Let's get on to our first tool of the video. And the first one is this Makita Combi drill set. It is the DLX 2176 TJ. Now that includes the DTT 154 and the DHP 481 which I have no idea what that means. However, <laughs> it's just in the Makita range. I don't know, it, maybe it means the level, they will have all these fancy numbers. To be fair, when I bought these, I've got to be honest with you, it took me an age to figure out which one's the best, whatever. These are brushless drills, so they're good. Now, the combi set, you've got the impact and you've got this combi drill. Now, both of them are brushless drills. This one has the metal chuck, which I noticed that had a bit of difference to some of the others. They have plastic chucks. Not so great. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on these because this is not a tool review, it's just to say which tools are gonna to be best. However, this kit is fantastic and I love it. I've got a Milwaukee uh, combi drill set as well and I way prefer the Makita. They're much easier to use, much easier on the trigger, like you can do some real slow movement there. The Milwaukee's a bit more fast paced. Um, so yeah, that's why I like them, they're really good. And it's a bit less torque. This is a little less torque and you can control the power on this button here and um, it saves you blowing up the heads of these of these screw bits here, like the PZ2 bits. If you're using the really powerful impacts, they just blow the head. You get your 100 mil screw halfway in, pops the head, and it takes you like, where well, you're gonna have to try and pick it out, which never happens. You end up angle grinding it out or pulling it out and destroying the wood, never good. However, fantastic set. This is a must for building a garden room. You can literally build the whole damn thing with this impact. You can put all the screws in, you can do all your stud work, your joists, everything and then you can do all your nuts and bolts up you can screw into concrete with the hammer drill on this imperative i i don't care what anyone says you need that to build a garden room um so write that one down because you need it next one up on our list is this fantastic dsp 600 zj 18 volt brushless makita plunge saw now it's 18 volts so it's got two batteries on it and the reason I absolutely love this tool is because of the dust removal. It's so good. I'm so OCD about dust, but it's got this dust port. You connect your Makita Hoover to it and it just sucks all the dust out. It's got this cover here I got off Etsy. It doesn't actually come with it. That is the port to uh, access your blade when you are changing it. However, when you get this little cover off Etsy, it stops even more dust coming out of there. And it's just a fantastic tool. So plunge saw, you can set your depth here, as you can see. We've got a little depth setter there, so that determines how deep that goes. And you can do your 45 degree mica cut on there. Um, wicked tool, absolutely love it. If any of you guys need to know what that little cover is, if you've got one of these, it's from Etsy, drop uh, some comments in the box below and I will put a link to where I got that from on Etsy. But yeah, overall, I think it's, it's quite an expensive tool. It's not cheap. So I am gonna say, I don't think it's imperative for building the garden room. What we use this for is cutting all the OSB sheets. So we get that dead straight cut. And then when we build all of our walls on the floor, as you've seen in our other videos, if you haven't, here's a little link. Um, we cut them all dead square, 90 degrees on the end. So that means all our walls are built plumb and straight and square. Um, this really helps. You can use a skill saw. Uh, 
However, it's just not gonna be as accurate bang on. We have done it without, and you can use the foot on the end, so you can set that to say 20 mil, which you're cutting off. It does work. So it's not imperative. It is just a nice little touch to have it. And um, I've used this for so much stuff. Like, it is awesome. So yeah, if you've got the budget, definitely get it. But if you're on a budget, don't worry about it. It's not ne necessarily important. You can get away with just a skill saw. So that leaves us to our next tool. And that is the Makita Multi-Tool, the DTM51ZJX7. Lots of letters in this tool for its uh, model number. However, wicked tool, multiple, like you've got loads of different speed settings here you can go through. I always use it on full speed. When you're cutting out maybe bits of wood, might be nice to lower it down on the speed. You can use it as a sander as well, so it's got different attachments. You pull this lever and it all comes off. Wicked tool. Not too loud as well. Nice tool to use, but just so handy on the garden room builds to just cut off little bits. Um, you know, if you're doing your batter and just those little edges might have something sticking out, just cut through. It's so useful. Um, and it's not even that much, like just to get the body only, not too expensive. Go check how much. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's not a lot of money. Um, is it imperative for a garden? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think it is. It's very handy, don't get me wrong, but um, no, not, not a necessity. So, But I do like talking about tools. I'm actually really enjoying this video. It's good fun just talking about all these tools because I look at them and I, and I think, oh, this saves me so much time. It makes me so happy. Um, but yeah, that's that tool done. Um, on to the next one, which is the Milwaukee Radio. Now, there's a reason why we have this fantastic boom box here, and it's not what you may think. The reason we have this absolute beast is because it's not actually too loud. It's got just two little speakers on it, but they don't create loads of bass, which is not what you want when you're on site. If you've got neighbors around or anything like that, you don't want to be pumping the music and upsetting them. Sometimes we like to get on a bit of center force which is a wicked radio station. However, it is a bit noisy. So with this radio, it's not too pumping. When some of the guys come on site with the Makita radio, it's got a real big bass to it. It's like really deep and you can hear it from bloody miles away. So we don't want that. This one's wicked. And we've got some Milwaukee tools so we can share the battery, which is also important. If you're gonna get a radio, make sure it's the radio that matches all your other tools, um, which for us, we've got mostly Makita. So this doesn't really work, however, the Makita radio is too loud. So if you're gonna get a radio, look at the Milwaukee, it's wicked. Um, but is it imperative for a garden room build? No, it isn't. You don't need a radio. You can use headphones, you can use your little radio from in the kitchen or whatever, if your wife lets you. Um, so yeah, it's not imperative, but I just thought I'd put it in there because it's fun and I do love it. It's, it's a wicked piece of kit. So on to the next one. And the next one is the Milwaukee M18 FFN nail gun it's the 18 volt range and it is actually no 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 i'm not even going to say it because i'm going to tell you which my favorite tools at the end but this is one of my favorite it is just such a good tool it's so good it's got the 100 mil nails here you can go 50 to 100 50 to 90 mil max nails these are 90s non ring shank these ones they will fire ring shank ones in two that's how you fit, set, set it all up if you can see here, I don't know if you can see, we've got these mode button here. You can switch it to automatic fire mode. And that is just the absolute beast. So when you're up there, you set it to that mode, you just hold the trigger and you can just go bang, 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 shoot loads of nails. And so you can work really fast with this thing. Um, I love it. It is heavy, you know, holding it sideways. If you're on a roof, holding it this way, like that is a hard, heavy tool. To, the pass load is much lighter. However, the pass load is too noisy. I've got a bit of tinnitus going on constant ringing in one of my ears. I hate the puzzle, it's so loud. I even wear defenders with this. However, the puzzle is just a bit antisocial for the old neighbors, isn't it? So we love this tool, um, highly recommended. It. Again, it's gonna be a budget tool though, isn't it? Because it's about, I think it's about 400 quid. Um, so, and you can choose the impact, 100 mil screws, bosh, bosh, don't actually need the nail gun. All it's gonna do is save you time and it's just such a badass tool, so yeah. Get one if you've got the budget. If you don't, don't beat yourself up about it. It's not gonna do a lot more. In fact, it's gonna do nothing more for you other than save time. So, on to the next tool. And that is this absolute destroyer of a tool here. So this is your laser level. It is the IMEX E60 laser level. Now, a fantastic bit of kit this. Super handy 
super useful when you're doing your base and working out levels. Now, what we get to, how it works, you've got this extender here, so you extend this to your length, which you need, and then you just fix this onto the side here as laser level works. I've got it upside down, which is good, but that's sort of the gist. And then you sit this little puppy here, put that up on the side, turn it on, and the laser matches with this, and that's how you do your levels. I love it, it's great, really good tool. If you're gonna be doing a base, I just highly recommend get one. This uh, IMAX E60 wasn't even that much, I think it was about 250, 300 pounds. So in the grand scheme of things, not a huge amount. However, it's going to make your garden room bang on level. When you're doing your shuttering for your concrete, it helps so much. And also when you're digging out your concrete base, that is gonna help so much to stop you digging too much dirt out. That is such a nightmare when you do that because all it's gonna do is cost you more money in concrete Yes, you're gonna get a thicker base, but if it's overkill, complete waste of time. So we think that is absolutely imperative. So jot that one down, write it down your list. I think get one if you're gonna be doing a concrete base. Now our next tool is this absolute monster mitosaur. This is the Makita mitosaur. I absolutely love it. It is the LS1019L, a superb tool. I cannot rate it anymore. And I personally think one of these is a necessity for building a garden room. You know, I absolutely love this saw. It is such a good saw to use. So when you're cutting down like this, you've got your full control there. You can do some serious depth cutting with that. You can do your angled cuts. You can whop it right over there to 45 degrees and back up to zero. It's got loads of different settings. You can go the other way as well. I'm going to show off now. I love that. Um, and then you've got your modes here you can flick through go to 45 degrees all the way up to 60 degrees this way and then the other way so awesome bit of kit it's got great extraction on it to keep your site tidy and then you can click it all the way and just pack it up like that so now it's solid switch it like this put it to the side and it's movable like that nice and easy straightforward as that so yeah i absolutely love the mitre saw from makita um it's so good Definitely, definitely, definitely get one of them if you're going to build this. Maybe not like a 680 pound saw like that. I think that's how much it is, quite a lot. Maybe not one so expensive, but Bosch do some slightly smaller versions. Wicked. We've had a Bosch one. I absolutely loved it. So definitely get one of these mitre saws to do your work. It helps so much with skirting board, like literally everything. Just, just go buy one and you'll have it forever and you won't regret it. So that leaves us to move on to our next tool. The collated auto feed screwdriver from Makita. Now, this is a wicked tool. Absolute game changer for plasterboarding. Love it. So you feed your collated plasterboard screws through there and you literally just fix them into the ceiling. You can see it in the other videos, it goes like that. There's a little drill bit in here that shoots the screws through. It's such a good tool, it saves so much time. You're just literally, you can have one person board and then the other just bang, 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 going through with these experienced plasterboarders will probably hate these because they jam up a bit and they have another screwdriver they use which they can use just as fast so however for people that aren't plasterboarding 24 7 this is a fantastic tool is it imperative to the garden room build i don't think so um but if you're going to do plasterboarding ever again like phew, mate, just just get one they're so good so much time saved um i think they're about 120 pounds something like that wicked tool absolutely love it um but no, don't think it's imperative to building a garden room. So that leads us on to our next tool, which is possibly one of my favorite tools. It's the Makita skill saw. This is the DHS 680 model, 165 millimeter depth cut. And I absolutely love this tool. Like more than I can tell you, I super love it. So I've had all of them. It's got a little light on it. I've had the DeWalt, um, I've had the Milwaukee, and I recently moved to this one, and it's so accurate. It's nice and short, really easy to use and cut. It's got a nice uh, joist belt hang on there, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's a really good bit of kit. And it is a necessity to have one of these for the garden room build. Like, you have to have one, really. You can use a handsaw, but come on, let's be real. Like, for the money, they're not that much money, and it's, going to, and it's just going to do a proper job. You know, for all your um, end cuts on the timber, using the square, you can see on some of our other videos. I'll put a link up there now. Um, you can do some real nice cuts with this and it is, it is more important than the uh, plunge sword, definitely. So make sure you get yourself a skill saw. It doesn't have to be Makita, but 
if you're gonna be using it again, just get a Makita, so good, so good. Okay, next tool is the Makita DKP180 planer. Now, this is a wicked tool to use on the garden rooms. Uh, reason I love this tool is because it gets you out of trouble. If there's, look, when you're building with timber, you've got discrepancy. Some of this timber is like 95 mil, some of it's 98 mil, 100 mil, it's really annoying. So if you're trying to go for that absolute perfect finish, um, like some of my lintels I build, I build the walls, put the lintels up, they're different sizes, it's so annoying. So I just plane a couple of mil off. So you just set the planer to a couple of mil like this. Probably do one mil at a time, just make it nice and smooth and plane it off. Wicked tool, however, not, not imperative on the garden room build. Um, I do love this tool. Another tool that I actually love related to this is the block planer. Um, I love this, really good. I use this mostly on cedar when maybe some of the reveals are a little bit just sticking out like half a mil by a mil and you put the trim on it, it's pushing it out. You can just set the depth on this and you know, just go up at your hand nice and smooth. If you go pull this flipping bad boy out, you can catch other cedar and you'll be in a world of trouble. So. One of these is only about 30 pounds, so if you're not gonna buy a big planer and you're not too fussed about everything being you know, to a mil perfect, um, which, which you don't have to be, like don't get me wrong, but because we do it as a business, we have to make sure everything's spot on, but a block planer is very helpful. Um, slightly different tools, but you know that, that's my advice. If you're not gonna get a planer, at least get a block planer so you can do a little bit to the, um, the small parts of the build. Right, really getting through them now. This is one of my favorite tools. I absolutely love this thing. It's the Makita DUB185 blower. What a tool. It's, sorry about that. Any headphone users, sorry about that, your ears. Such a good tool. Cleans up the whole site throughout your day as you're going, you know, just a little bit blowing here and there. If your tool's got loads of dust all over it, you just want to get rid of it, this just blasts it all off. If there's anything on the floor or on the door sills or jams or whatever, blast it off. Such a handy little tool. And it's, I think it, this was actually like 70 quid just for the body. So I'm actually gonna say this is imperative for a garden room build. It saves my life. And you'll use this for the rest of your life on everything. You know, if you're in the little shed and there's a load of leaves, just get this thing out, give it a little blow, it's gonna get them all out. Love this tool. Could potentially be my favorite tool. So uh, make sure we keep watching and find out at the end which one that is. Uh, on to the next one. Okay, the next tool is this Milwaukee M18 FN18G. That stands for 18 gauge. It is the 18 gauge pin gun. I flipping love this tool, so good. So we've got our stainless brads here, which you pop in, you just slide that up. It shoots them so well, it's nice and silent, pops the pins in. We only really use this tool for the cedar cladding and we use it for the skirting board just to pin it after you've glued it. So we put some different pins in for the skirting, but we use the stainless ones so we don't get any rust on the outside and that way they'll stay there for longevity. Um, but yeah, wicked tool. Obviously we're using Milwaukee nail guns because we've got a few Milwaukee tools. And as I said before, I'm not such a fan of the Pazload. This is super light. This is definitely better than the Pazload. It just is, it's, it's a fantastic tool. Um, so I think you may, really need to buy one of these. If you're gonna build a garden room and do cedar cladding, you need a pin gun. So if I were you, I'd go for the Milwaukee. Um, again, you're gonna need some batteries for it or one battery. The battery lasts up all day, like you won't recharge it. It uses hardly any power. Really good bit of kit this, uh, and definitely one of my favorites. So I highly recommend this if you're going to build a garden room by yourself. On to the next one. So we're back on another Milwaukee tool. It's the M18 FJS Jigsaw. Super tall. Again, really, really good piece of equipment here. Jigsaw, um, we use this for two things. We use this mostly for laminate flooring. When we're doing our reveals on the cedar, or the little cutouts and bits like that, we change the blade, put a fine one on, trim that cedar out. Sometimes use the multi-tool for that, which is actually really nice. Um, it doesn't splinter the wood as much. And then we use this blade on it, which is like a bread knife um, for the insulation that we've, you've seen on the other videos. Uh, so yeah, sort of imperative to have a jigsaw, just get one. Like every DIY I should have a jigsaw anyway. Um, reason we got Milwaukee is just because I actually like the body of it, I like uh, the way it was and I had a few of the batteries. So went for Milwaukee instead of Makita um, and I can't fault it. So very happy with it. Um, and that's all I've got to say about that. So we're moving through the pile pretty fast now, we're getting towards the end. So just a couple more tools to go. On to another Milwaukee tool actually. It's the Milwaukee Fuel 18 volt uh, M18 FH SDS drill. So, SDS drills. Do you need one to build a garden room? Um, it is handy for anchoring the wall plates to 
go through the concrete. I, I have to admit, it is super handy. You'll be there for a while with the combi drill. I must admit, it will take you longer. Um, and some bits you're gonna get stuck on if there's stones in the concrete, it's just gonna to struggle to push through them. This thing is an absolute monster, fires through it. So SDS is like 50-50, like it's gonna make life easier. Perhaps try it with the drill, see if you can get through. And if you can't, then just go buy one. You can get you even cheap ones. They do like a Titan in like screw fix, and that is an SDS. It's like 60 quid and it's a plug-in 240, 230 volt, whatever, but that is gonna do the job. So maybe not have to spend a load of money on a on a on a beast like this. However, it is good, um, hand to but yeah. So that sums up the SDS to 50-50. Not imperative, but it is very handy. So coming up to some of the last tools here, we've got the Milwaukee Grinder. This is the M18 CAG115X PDS. Whatever that means. Um, <laughs> it's a beast, 18 volt again. Such a good tool, I love it. Um, building guard rooms, like there's nails or screws that you just can't get out. This thing just fires them off. And it's really imperative if you do your lintels above the door and you're gonna stick your M10 bolts through, you've got to cut them off to something. So you can use a hacksaw. Have we got a hacksaw around it? There is a hacksaw somewhere, I do have one. I use it normally for cable, like big armored, but however, this is just the game changer. Um, so if you're any like DIYer, mechanic style guy, just get one. Like, don't even worry about the guard room, just get an angle grinder, it's so good, so handy. This one's really nice, got a nice little um, trigger on it, nice to hold. Works with the blades, it's a beast. So yeah, fantastic tool, that one. So if you've stayed with us this long, thank you so much. Uh, we're just on the last couple of tools now. It's gonna be the toolbox, which I've got parked up over here. We've worked through all the tools now. I'm just gonna fire through a couple of really small tools that I absolutely love and think they're imperative. We've got loads of these, which the clamps that were wing quick grips, really good. They just squeeze things, tighten up. If you're doing joists by yourself, really handy to straighten them up, clamp them down. Get yourself some of these. Really good. Next, battery charger. If you're gonna get some Makita tools, get one of these double battery chargers, especially if you've got the plunger so it's gonna charge them real quick. Again, not imperative, but just thought I'd show you guys. Pop that over there. What have we got down here? Couple more bits. So, we have got the foot pedal. You need this. This is just the one for plasterboarding. When you're putting up against the wall, if you're trying to raise the plasterboard, just a couple of mil, like 20, 30 mil, Pop this under it and you lift the plus board up. Just, just get one, pretty handy. Don't know where my good surfer is, but this is a Stanley one I've got to just surf down the plasterboard. Tidy those ends up, lovely tool. Have to have one of them for plasterboarding. All this stuff's really cheap. Wind bags are fit indoors. Just pump them up like that. Pretty nice bit of kit. They just hold the doors in while you're fitting them. Pop them either side of the doors, pump, pump, pump. Um, that's if you're fitting your own doors. And then we've got the drill condom. One of my favorite tools, definitely, or accessories to a tool. Uh, I've showed you on a video before about this. It's such a good tool, I love it. You just put it on the drill. Where is the drill? Oh, it's all boxed up. But you put it on the drill with your hole saw and you put it up on your light bits like that when you're cutting them out the plasterboard and the drill spins around the side and you get no dust in your face, no plasterboard, nothing. I use it for the cedar too. Love this. Get, I got that from Screwfix, I think. That tenor, such a good tool. I definitely get one of those. Right, so on to the last thing, which is the toolbox. Now, we're just gonna run through these because why not? It's the toolbox. Like, there's gonna be tools in here you have to have to build a garden room. Like, literally, no two ways about it. For me, the ear defenders. Love these, always get abused from, oh, I can't hear what you say. I love them. They stop the noise from the tools and just very handy bit of kit. So if you wanna save your ears, just get some. Big ones, small ones, they're the ones. Tape measure. Obviously, you've got to have a tape measure. Like, you should do anyway. But this one I absolutely love. It's the Stanley Fat Max 8 meter. And if you look here, it's just in millimeters, which I absolutely love. Not much stuff done in inches anymore. If you work in inches, that's cool. Don't get this one. But they do these um, and they're wicked. You know, you can get some super extension without it flexing. What am I at? I'm at three and a half meters there. And we're still going. What a beast. Um, I love that. It's got a really good clip on the end to hold on to things. So, good tape is imperative some safety goggles you've got to have them uh, stay with me guys i know some of this might be a bit boring but these are just little things that i think you know might save you time just to grab string line get one of those definitely need that um, chalk line again get one of those can save you time if you're marking joists or whatever for lights or anything like and you want to do a big long row and you don't have a laser just get the chalk line up ping it job done stanley knife you know 
stand, standard things carry around me all day. Some nice cutters for electrical cable if you're going to do some first fix. Uh, if you're not, don't worry. A pencil with a pencil sharpener. You can use a Stanley on these or you can just get your little sharpener, which is really handy and it tidies these square rectangle pencils up. Lovely. Um, loads of various bits in this square, uh, screwdrivers and stuff. This one's really cool. A uh, 70mm socket. This is for our lintels above the doors when we join them up. It's just on an adapter, half drive adapter, which fits into the drill on the when you put it on the low torque, high torque mode. So really slow but high torque. This just sends those bolts home. So 17mm socket with a little adapter you can get on Amazon. It's just a half drive which goes into this half drive socket, 70mm. So that's actually really handy to have to get that job done. Um, you know, various screwdrivers, hole saw bits. We only really use a 16mm uh, spade tip. This is a Bosch one, really good because it's got the thread on the end. It pulls it through. Great bit of kit that. Um, so that's imperative. And as we move down, some more tools here. We've got the square. Have to have this. Get one of these. This is going to just sort you right out. Just get a square. Um, a good hammer. Always nice. We've got the S-wing here. Lovely hammer. Nice to have a good hammer. Combination square. Nice small one here, which is good. It's a Baco one. Um, got this from Axe Meister. Uh, so good good little tool here you need this just for you know measuring out laminate if you're doing cutouts and things like that or on your cedar super little tool that so get yourself a nice combi square not a cheap one uh, like this one here this is a bit of a cheaper one again it does do square but it's a bit flimsy and it's a bit crappy it's a bigger one but i don't tend to use that much i've got this nice little one here did have another one but i lost it which i just haven't replaced again if you're doing first fits cabling get one of these this is going to make your day i love this it just trims off that look you pull that out, it's going to open those cables up there, and you can just trim off both the ends up. Oh dear. One at a time like that, and it just trims them up nicely, you see? So now they're ready to fit into a socket with a bit of earth leaving. Wicked tool this. Um, again, screw fix, I think. So that's important if you're doing first fix. Staple gun. Um, staple gun? Yeah, need one of those. Rubber mallet for the laminate. Definitely get that, because it's good just to knock it in when you're working through it. Um, got another little mallet there. Um, slide and bevel, really important to have this for when you're doing your cedar on the edges um, and if you're working any other angles out, like the cedar reveals onto the door sill, which is an angle like that. It's nice just to use this um, slide and bevel to work out those. So get one of those, they're cheap. I've also got a cheap one here, um, like fiver or something, nothing, really good. Hole saw, I actually use a 76 mil hole saw and that does pretty much all the lights, but. Whatever lights you're using, you're going to have to get a hole saw to match the size of that. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. Like little level for the doing the sockets. That's handy. Definitely get one of those. That's really good. Um, or a pad saw. If you're not going to buy a multi-tool, get yourself a little pad saw because that you'll be able to mark your sockets, cut them out with the plasterboard. Absolutely love that tool. This bad boy's good as well. Little level. Um, will help with lining up your sockets to make sure they're all level before you cut them out and um yeah that's that's pretty much it for the important tools right we are coming towards the end of the video now um thank you so much for watching up till now if you have and if you subscribe that is fantastic if you haven't just click the button below because i actually love making these videos i really enjoy it it's good fun and it's a subject that i've got uh, a lot of passion for so thank you very much again now, I did say at the start video, I was going to say at the end, which my favorite tool was. I'm going to pull it out right now. It's here. <laughs> yes, it is the Makita Impact Driver. I love this tool so much. It literally sits in my pocket. Not these trousers, because I don't wear these at work on site. But it hangs around all day with me, and I'm constantly using it. And it saves so much time and effort. Like, I have used drills before without an impact to put screws in. And by the end of the day, your elbow's killing your shoulder hurts. This thing makes life so easy. So... Like I said at the start of the video, get one of these sets. They're so good and they will last you so long. I wouldn't be surprised me if it wouldn't last you like 15 years. They really are that good, these brushless motors. Um, and I just can't recommend it anymore. So if there's one tool I recommend getting, get one of these. So that is the end. Thank you so much for watching. Again, as I said, um, I really appreciate it. I've really enjoyed making this video for you today. And I hope it's helped you with your decisions on what tools to buy. So... Thanks again for watching. 
If you could like the video, that would be fantastic. Any comments, just drop them in the box below and I will answer as quickly as I can. And if you could subscribe, again, that is going to help me so I can do more of these videos for everybody at home. So thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.